sitting in the rain, the underdogs. It was our first and only sort of a hit single. And, and, and it's become iconic now, I suppose, you know. Um, I would have been about 17 years old. Um, wasn't our idea to do it. It was Eldred Stebbing, the guy that owned the recording studio and owned the club that we played at, the Galaxy. This would have been in circa 1966 or 67, I guess. To be honest with you, I've never understood how anyone liked it so much, but because I wasn't crazy about it, you know. There's all this giggling and laughing on the record, you know, that Eldred immediately, as soon as he heard it, said, that's it, it's going out like that, that's great. And I, I sort of thought, oh no. But, you know, but anyway, you know, what the heck, yeah. It was for uh, Colenso Wellington, and it was for a chap called Roger McDonnell, and they flew me down to Wellington. I mean, th this would be in the 70s, well, maybe 79, yeah. And Roger flew me down. I walked into his office with my guitar. He had all the lyrics written, everything, it, which, which was quite unusual in those days, because I used to often write the lyrics, but Roger had written them all. And um, I took up my guitar, and it was just one of those times. And I just started playing it. And there it was immediately. It, you know, that's how long it took to write. Because he'd written these good words, you know, that were catchy, you know. And I just picked up the guitar, and life's a whole long journey, boys. You know, and off we went. Tony Williams shot it, great friend of mine. Tony, a wonderful uh, film, film director. He shot it. Um, there was lots of famous people in it. I mean, like Bruno Lawrence was in it, and um, quite a few other people. Sleeping Dogs, once again, through the advertising, I'd done a lot of commercials with Roger Donaldson uh, directing the commercials. And Sleeping Dogs, of course, was Roger's first film. And um, he just came to me and he said, look, I've got Dave Calder doing the uh, score for it, which I thought Dave did a really nice job of. He said, but look, I'm I want you to write about seven or eight songs that will play throughout the film and, um, and then will be released on an album, which did absolutely nothing, I don't think. But, um, but it was fun to do. It was great to do and I had great singers on it because uh, they flew us down to HMV at, or EMI in Wellington to record it. And um, I had Mark Williams singing, Sharon O'Neill, uh, Josie Ricker it was, it was great, wonderful. I didn't write it, it was an old country song uh, that, that was in a completely different time feel, you know, like, dear John, and, you know, so I thought, okay, well, we'll slow that down. And um, I got Jackie Fitzgerald to sing it, and she sang it great. And um, once again, Tony Williams was the director uh, who had been the director on uh, uh, The Crunchy Ad. And Tony's magic touch again, you know. Um, I mean, it was shot in a quarry in Wellington. And it looked, I mean, I mean even now it still looks great, that ad, you know. I mean, it looks real. It's cool. Shoop, shoop, diddy wop, come a come a wang dang. By God, how long have you got? Um, but, um, I, I was writing it at home one day, and I was doing it j just, just for my own amusement. And I had it in a sort of New Orleans, a sort of a Dr. John sort of a feel, you know, she, she, daddy, bop, um, come away, you know, kind of that kind of feel. And an English friend of mine, Mark Ackerman, called in, and he said, that, that's bloody catchy, man. He says, that's good. He says, but you're doing it all wrong. I said, how do you mean? He said, you should do it English. Do it like... Bill Wyman's Just Weezin' Rockstar. I said, really? He said, yeah. And he says, and what's more, I've got a name for you. I said, what? He said, yeah, Monte Video. That's what we'll call you. I've always wanted to have an act called Monte Video and the cassettes. I said, oh. and of course I got sucked in. I said, yeah, okay. It was released in Australia and it shot up the charts immediately. And we thought, blimey, this is great. So we, we let it be known to the Australian press and the radio stations that Monty Video, due to tax reasons, because he was English, of course, you know, I mean, because I used an English accent to do it, and um, was, was going to be passing through New Zealand 
and could be contacted at this number on these days. So I used to sit there talking to all these Aussie radio stations who thought Monty was English. He was from London. And, um, and he knew Ringo Starr and all these people. Elton John played on the record and everything, you know. And I used to just sit there with a stock sheet of lies that Mark had written for me and lie through my teeth to these people. And we sucked them in. That They did, just didn't know until finally, after it had been up to the top of the charts and all that, finally in one of the papers it was Great Monte Video Exposé. New Zealand jingle writer. That was myself and uh, Murray McNabb um, and Lee Tamahori came to us because once again I'd done a lot of ads with Lee, you know, and, and here's Lee's first film, you know. So Lee flew us down to Wellington to have a look at the rough cut and bless him, because you don't get this often, he had no temp music on it. Wonderful. All you film directors out there, don't put temp music on it. Don't put Pink Floyd on it, or, or Ry Cooter, or any of the usual ones. You know, because then you're trapped in it, you know. So here's old Lee, I mean, bless him for this, you know, and there was no temp music. And this, of course, made the film even raw, you know. And I, I remember sitting there halfway through it and looking at Mars going, jeez, this is unbelievable, you know. How can we get out of this? You know, because so, you know, it was it was it was so powerfully scary. It was, it was like wow. But there you go. I mean, a week later, we're in the studio. It shows how you become dispassionate. It says, now what do we do when he hits her? You know, <laughs> you know what do we do there? And so you know, and and Lee was fantastic. Yeah, um, I mean, he came along, and uh, like Muzz and I played him the theme. You know the theme tune, uh, Muzz was on piano, I was playing air guitar and humming it. And Lee said, cool boys, love it, and split. And we never saw him again until we delivered all the music. You know, like he just trusted us. It was really, really cool to work for him. You know, he's pro probably the best I've ever worked with. We did Broken English, once again, that was myself and Murray McNabb. And we did that for Gregor Nicholas. Uh, he was the director. It was a funny one, that one. I mean, like, Gregor was great, but, but he was the antithesis of Lee and uh, that he was at the studio all the time. Oh, always on my shoulder going, a little, little bit happier. No, no, a little bit sadder. No, no, a little bit happier. You, you know, he was a hands-on old Gregor, you know. It, it was cool, you know, I mean, because we loved him. But um, it was com a completely different approach. And, and it wasn't one of my favorite movies because Gr Gregor had trouble with the production house and they changed his ending and, you, you know, and as far as he was concerned, ruined his movie. And I'd, I'd say he probably wouldn't be far wrong on that, you know. But it's a kid's thing. It's uh, for young children. And myself and John McCabe, who's, who's a great writer, um, came up with the whole thing, really, and, and, it's, um, and it's these bees. It's this little troop of bees that are, um, all have some sort of a disability. I mean, like Emily only has one wing. It's just been released. Our first uh, video is on um, YouTube and on Facebook, and we're getting massive reception, massive. You know, like it's only been on a few weeks and we've got about 10,000 hits or something. I've been very fortunate. I've, I've been able to live in a recording studio pretty well every day of the week since I was 21. And I'm 65 in about a month. So, you know, I love recording studios. That's where I, that's home for me, to be in a recording studio. You know, just, just love it. So that's the main thing. And with all my friends, all the musos, and you know, and that's just what we do every day. And it's, you know, I mean, sometimes it gets a bit tricky, but you couldn't really call it work, you know.